Okay, next we're going to look at the MIM capacitor uh, and a couple of different capacitor architectures for integrated circuits. So MIM capacitors are metal insulator metal capacitors, and they used to be fairly popular in RF CMOS processes, but have gone out of favor due to their expense and their poor performance at high frequency. And also, because they're using a relatively thin oxide, they're more susceptible to electrostatic damage. If we look at the structure of a MIM capacitor, we have the structure looking in the Z direction uh, shown right here. And what we have basically is a parallel plate capacitance. And it's a bit hard to explain, so we're going to look at a cross section of the structure. So our cross section is going to go roughly through here. And if we look at the cross section of the structure, we again have a top metal. We have that lower metal, and usually they add a MIM metal in between the top and lower metal. And this is a mezzanine layer that's added just to make a MIM capacitor. And then, of course, this is all built above a substrate. So if we look at where our capacitance arises from, it's a parallel plate capacitance arising from the top metal and that MIM metal that we'll call C-MIM. And then we get a couple of parasitic capacitances due to the substrate capacitance. Additionally, the metallization has some finite resistance and inductance due to ohmic losses and currents flowing through the metal. So our circuit model is uh, very similar to the circuit model that we used for the inductor, uh, albeit uh, we don't have the same losses due to eddy currents and we re removed the bridging, or the bridging capacitance uh, as uh, the structure itself is now uh, a capacitor. Nonetheless, you can see that there's an RLC uh, circuit, so it will also have a resonance and there is some loss due to metallization and substrate and it, the loss gets worse at high frequency because this very thin MIM metal uh, tends to look like a thin film, which means that it becomes very resistive at high frequency. We can also make a parallel plate capacitor using lateral metal uh, in what they call a VN cap or a vertical natural cap. And sometimes we also call this a finger cap because it looks like interdigitating your fingers. Fingers increase the effective coupling area our capacitance is arising from the metal separation between the fingers. And typically it will use multiple metal layers to increase the capacitance density. The circuit model for this structure is similar to the MEM capacitor. There are a few other passive structures that we aren't going to talk about but are fairly commonly used nowadays. One would be spiral transformers. Another would be slab inductors, and this is where we just take a piece of metal and uh, estimate the partial inductance in that piece of metal and use that in our circuit. And finally, we might use transmission lines if the frequency is high enough. Generally, uh, we uh, can create any of these structures uh, using uh, the basic spiral uh, or, uh, uh, or a similar geometry. Uh, a slab inductor is just a, a long metal trace. And a transmission line is also just a long metal trace, uh, albeit where the electric length is fairly significant. Um, and when we make these structures, we generally solve uh, for the primary parameters using electrostatic approximations, and then we use EM simulations to make exact models uh, of the structures. I wanted to add a quick note about the capacitance, uh, the capacitive impedance uh, in the model that we were just looking at because we did see that it had an inductor and a resistor, which means that it's going to have some resonant behavior just like the inductor. So if we plot the impedance of the capacitive structures, what we would see is that at low frequency, the impedance would decrease as the frequency increases up till we get to a self-resonant frequency. And then the inductance and the structure will start to dominate and the impedance will increase. The self-resonant frequency SRF is approximately equal to 1 over 2 pi times the C from the structure, C mem or C finger, times the L metallization. Typically, the self-resonant frequ frequency in a capacitor is much larger than the self-resonant frequency in an inductor, and this is primarily because the uh, inductor is a much larger structure 
uh, so that the parasitics tend to be bigger.